in this um, lecture video, we're going to cover some uh, basics about uh, importing data, what we're looking at here, and um, some kind of um, uh, tricks with R Studio. So first of all, your R Studio may look different. It will look different if you've just opened it for the first time. And the couple things I do right away is I go to Tools, Global Settings, and then, oh, where is it? Appearance. So let's see here. What, do, what do, I'm using the tomorrow, tomorrow night 80s theme. And you can see how, you know, do whatever's best. Actually, a lot of people like that, like this one. Um, that one works well with the eyes. I like the the colors for me jump out with uh, tomorrow night 80s, but there's a lot, there's a lot of different ones that do the same thing. And you should do just have fun, find find what works the best or is or is the most um, user friendly for you. <clears throat> okay, so let's see here. Um, there may be some things in the general tab that you were that you um, need to uh, monkey with. Um, same thing with the code. You could kind of adjust um, how you edit code uh, here. Um, and as well as here. So uh, yeah, that's that's that. Um, and yeah, there's a whole bunch more. I mean, there's you may need to get into the R Markdown since we're doing exclusively R Markdown. You may need to get into the R Markdown um, uh, tab here. Um, but anyway, enough about that. Some other things I do are when I create graphs, they'll spill out into the uh, um, the markdown code window. I don't like that. So what I will do is have, um, I'll go gear and I'll have the chunk output uh, in the console versus inline. And so what that does is we get output um, for the statistics in this console tab, and then the graphs themselves show up in the plots tab versus in line with the code. Okay, so there's a handful of other things that we will use regularly. So I showed you the gear there, but then also there's um, there are gears here too. So you could kind of, um, same thing, output, show code and output, you could do it here. Um, there's a couple different ways of of having warning. Some of these, some a lot of times the code you, um, in different packages will, uh, when you make a mistake with the code or also different packages are sort of noisier than others, they'll have warnings and messages that show up in the console. You may or may not want to see them. You may want to see them because they're helpful. You may not want to see them because it's just giving you information about the output that you actually don't even care about. I'll just say it um, because... It's just information. So um, you may have noticed also when you change the show warnings and stuff, um, it, it affects the code itself. Uh, here you can see like warning equals true, warning equals false when I talk toggle it. So that's cool. So that's the gear there. Whoops. Um, let's just collapse. There's a couple different ways to collapse the code chunk. I was doing alt O. Um, and to expand it all would be shift alt. Oh, I accidentally hit P. Okay, good. Uh, I, uh, some of the shortcuts, I this work computer is a, is a Windows computer. I've historically um, worked uh, in our studio exclusively on, on my Mac. A lot of you, this I would guess it's 50-50 if you're watching this video. So um, I'll try to re, uh, go through the, both shortcuts as, as they come up because I use shortcuts a lot. That's helpful. Okay, what else can I talk about here is... Um, when you use an R markdown file, so again, you get options. Um, you could do an R script, which just looks like code. Um, uh, there's no like indentations kind of like here. Don't save. Um, there are number, there's no, none of these. So, uh, in R markdown, what you do is you knit and what that does is it'll, it'll do a couple of different things. You can, uh, if I were to just hit knit right here, it would run all the lines of code. You wouldn't get any of the outputs in the console or any of the graphs in the plots. It would run it all. 
and then it would output into a let's check the yaml header output it would it would output into an html document so whatever you have your internet whatever type of browser you use for your internet uh that'll open um as well as a preview window you can make this pdf um so that's it. That's that. But the, see here, there's a triangle for a pull down. So you can force it to knit to PDF or knit to Word. I don't like the format in knitting to Word. You may be excited if you are writing academic papers and journals and stuff. You may think, great, I'll just knit to Word. Um, the fidelity of the graphs degrades. Uh, whereas like you can, if you knit to PDF, um, then the image and same thing with HTML, then the images are vectorized. All that means is as you zoom in and out, the number of um, information as you zoom recalibrates. And so you never lose, it never gets like um, pixelized or, or like a line, a smooth line doesn't become jagged um, because you're just zo zooming in on like say a static image. So uh, that's, so that's that, okay. What else we got? Um, this is again, it's called the YAML header. And this is, this needs to be, this is kind of a picky uh, bit of code. It It is the only part of code um, that's specifically designed like this with these three dashes. Now, when you open a new, let's just open a new, not, let's not create a new project. Let's, I'm sorry, let's go here. Our markdown file. Um, bam. My name, the date, HTML. Let's do this just so I can show you. Documents, fine. Go. Okay. You can see here you get a lot of stock example stuff. This is good. You know, and you have like um, include this code when you knit um, equals false means you don't get some of the setup nuts and bolts code. Like you, you wouldn't include code if you were giving making a report to give to your boss. You may include your code if you're trying to show your statistics professor how you got to an answer or something. I don't know. Uh, this shows you how like, okay, well, this is a subheader because it has these two hashtags um, versus this would be a header. So, uh, and it talks about some things here. Um, Cars is a stock um, data frame included in our studio. There's several. Uh, data frames that are or data sets that are included in R. Uh, so that's that. But typically when I open a markdown file, I actually delete, well, I actually delete everything, but you may want to keep this, let's call it the setup, the setup chunk. But anyway, real quick, I want to show you. So you got, this is um, anything within these three back ticks, which is the key that's next to the number one on the top of your keyboard. It's not a single apostrophe. And that'll jack you up. So like here, this is what a single apostrophe looks like. This is what a back tick looks like. They look different, right? So when you got these three back ticks followed by a bracket and then some stuff, close bracket, and then your code lies within the three back ticks up top and the brackets and the bottom uh, three back ticks at the bottom. Okay. So th that's called a code chunk and you can minimize or expand it. Um, so you got, this is like a typical chunk of code. This is a typical chunk of code. And there's the two exceptions going back to what I started with. This is the YAML header and you have the title colon, the name in quotes. It's gotta be formatted like this. Oh, and you know how, when I created a new markdown file just now, I, I said, oh, let's, let's select PDF from the HTML to PDF. Well, that's the difference, see here, so HTML, PDF, okay. And that's that, and you can see how on this YAML header, you can add things, it does necessitate specific formatting, however. Okay, that's the YAML header. The second unique um, bit of code in an R markdown is the first code chunk, because that's the setup. So. Um, setup is usually where, um, I'll just show you, I'll just show you. Setup is usually where I include a lot of the setup. So like, okay, when I knit, how do I want, do I want the code, which is echo? Yes, I do. Do I want messages? No, I don't. False warnings? No. 
And then I load all the packages. And this is how you load packages. We're going to cover that a little bit more soon. And that's also where I set the working directory. Now, um, that's all that everything I just said uh, minus this is tech is technique. A lot of people do do that. Um, use the setup code chunk. Again, that code chunk is defined by between the three back ticks at the top and the bottom. Um, and that's usually where they set their working directory, maybe even bring in the data itself. Okay. So um, with that said, you never, first of all, you never want, you can't ha have the same name for these code chunks, which by the way, appear here. So you could do a quick scan. It's kind of like, this is like a table of contents. There's the top. Okay. So then we got um, chunk one setup. Chunk two, cars. Chunk three, pressure. Let's see. Cars, pressure. And then the name is is prior to the, the comma. So again, you go R space, the name. And then if you need to add more code, you go comma. Usually you, you set up like, I don't know why someone would. Okay, so echo means you're going to see the code when you knit in your, in your either PDF or your HTML or Word doc. I don't know why mid code you'd want to all of a sudden see your code. So typically the, I'll show you, go back to here. Typically the echo message and warning is all done in one fell sweep, swoop up at the top of the R markdown file. But any, so typically this is like very right normal. You'd see um, people naming a code chunk just with one singular word, no spaces. And a general rule of thumb is if you're going to add a space, just use an underscore. It keeps things simpler. And I'll, you'll see that uh, as we go in these videos. Okay, so back to the table of contents. You don't ever want the name set up anywhere in subsequent uh, code chunks. If you accidentally copy and paste a code chunk, the name, of course, of the code chunk is going to uh, reappear. And so you could um, click on this to do a scroll of the table of contents to see if indeed that is the case. Uh, also, if you try to knit, you get a warning. Um, you can. So if you copy and paste a code chunk, you will see like, uh, what the heck, Jim Cooley was lying. Um, I can run this code with a code chunk name the same, and that is indeed the case, but you can't knit later on. All right. So that is that is the setup. And we'll end um, with this setup. Um, this is kind of the, this is going to be the code chunk that we're using for this class. Um, so we got the YAML header, uh, and then we have the setup chunk and what I do is I load the packages I need for subsequent code. And typically what I do, and I'm not perfect about this if I'm moving fast or if I just know what the package does, I will label it. So you can see here, if it's light gray, then that's not code. This is called commenting. So, um, if you hit a hashtag then and you write some words then that's just a that's just a comment and so after the line of code like here you can say hashtag and then load base r data sets and i'm just describing what the uh package does um yeah and again we covered the we covered the packages so the packages here are um, a sort of like a plugin is a, is a typical word that people know, but it's, it's something that does a specific thing. So like for instance, a bind, uh, the description is combined multidimensional arrays. And so I'll say like, um, LM test for the Durbin Watson test for, of assumptions. Okay. So, uh, you get, you with packages, you install them. What did I hit? I hit update. You install them. Um, you know, let's see here. I see blob. You can install them. Boom. Hit install. Uh, you can update from this window. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean they're working for you. You have to, uh, wake them up for your, your, your project by doing this code. So library parentheses, the name of the package, and then close parentheses. And that gets them going. 
And then if I wanted to just run, run that line um, on a Windows computer, it's uh, control enter. And on, I should bring my Mac, I think it's command enter is the uh, running one line of code. There's a shortcut to run a whole, a whole chunk of code. Uh, also, you can hit this play button right here, run current chunk. Um, and then the last thing I'll show you is set the working directory with code. This is, so this is my technique. And again, um, in the aerospace statistics folder, so you have your R directory folder, which you definitely want to just have one of those. And then I have many projects. One folder is this aerospace statistics folder. And then here are the files that are within that. And currently we're looking at this, this R markdown, aerospace stats R markdown. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I can hit more and set the working directory. Um, and again, you get this code in the console right there. Or I can, um, uh, or I can or I can copy it and always have it in my in my line of um in my in my line of code right there. So boom. Okay, so that's that. Um that's how you set the working directory using code. And then from there, uh anything that you create, um, such as graphs, will be will be uh kept in this folder right here. So in this video, we kind of covered a um, bunch of uh, bunch of things um, to kind of get you up and running and the YAML header, the setup code chunk, and what you're basically looking at when you um, start up our studio.